So we're going to start off by finding a, and the way we do that is that we're going to normalize this wave function. So that means if we take the absolute value square of the wave function, and then we integrate this throughout all possible space, so negative infinity to positive infinity, this should be equal to 1. So let's try to calculate this expression, and this would allow us to deduce what this constant a should be. So uh, this expression here, the absolute value square of the wave function, this is just equal to the wave function multiplied by its conjugate, so the conjugate dx. And then the wave function is equal to this term, and you can see that the wave function itself is composed of two separate se sections. So you have the constant a, and then you have this e to the power of negative a mx squared divided by h bar. So this uh, term here is entirely real. There are no imaginary components. And then you have this imaginary term over here. You have e to the power of negative iat. So this is your wave function. So after, once you take the conjugate, this wave function is going to become, you will have your conjugate of your constant a, and then this e term is just going to be unchanged by the conjugate because conjugates only change imaginary terms. And then for this complex term over here, because of the conjugate, the negative sign will go away and it will become positive iat. So you can check this by using Euler's formula. So you can easily prove this by using this relationship. You can check that when you take the conjugate of this e term over here, you just switch out the negative sign for a plus or you switch out the plus sign for a negative. So that's what we've done here. Because of the conjugate, the negative sign goes away. And you can see that both of these, they're just inverses of each other. So when they multiply together, they go away. It's just equal to 1. So inside the integral, all we're left with is the absolute value square of the constant a with an integral from negative infinity to positive infinity of these two terms multiplied together. So negative 2am x squared divided by h bar dx. And then this is just a Gaussian interval. And I'm not going to prove it here, but you can look up this integral. you see that any integral of this form is just equal to the square root of pi over k. So you can actually use a double integral to prove this, so I'm not going to show that in this video. But using that result, I can easily evaluate this integral over here. You can see that the k in this case is given by 2am divided by h bar. So you get the square root of pi divided by 2am divided by h bar. So this is m. So you can uh, clean this up a bit, just switch out the h bar to the top. And then because this whole process that we're doing here, we're normalizing this wave function. We set this term over here to be equal to 1. So this allow, allows us to deduce that the constant a square is going to be equal to the square root of 2am divided by pi h bar. And then a, this could be a complex number, this could be anything. And so we, are, we have a freedom to choose uh, what form we will take. So as long as its absolute value square is going to be equal to this term, then it will be a valid constant a. So we could choose a complex term for this, of course, but then again, uh, we will always want to stick to the simplest form. So that's why we'll choose a to be uh, an entirely real term. So there will be no complex components. So that means a is going to be equal to 2am divided by pi h bar to the power of 1 fourth. So this is entirely real. There are no imaginary components. So this is what we're going to choose a to be. This is the simplest way for us to define, to choose a. So if a is chosen to be equal to this term, then this wave function will be normalized. So that's how you do part A.